this video, we're gonna cover removing an old dishwasher and installing a new one. So usually there's only about two attachment points. Either they're gonna be up here, one, two, or on the sides here. But ours kind of broke off on this side, so it looks like we only have the one screw on this side. So I'm gonna remove that and then take this bottom kick plate off and readjust the legs to lower down the unit in order to be able to slide it out. And there's usually not much to actually installing a dishwasher. It's usually a drain, a water hookup, and the power. Make sure to turn the breaker off to the unit, this way that there's no power there, because getting shocked sucks. Now I can see that there's no power to it. So we already have it unscrewed from the cabinet, we remove the kick plate, we turn off the power, and we put the legs in the lowest position. So now we gotta go ahead and slide it out and disconnect the power, the water, and the drain. In order to slide it out and not damage the floor, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some cardboard, put it on there and slide it out. All right, so I just need to remove the water line and the drain line, and then we'll go ahead and finish sliding it out the rest of the way. So now we just gotta disconnect the power and we'll be ready to dump this guy out of here. So we'll remove the cover there and unsplice the wires. So the whole thing's out and disconnected. We'll get our delivery tomorrow. We'll go ahead and we'll hook that one up tomorrow. If the other one comes with a cord, I might, I might just go ahead and add an outlet behind it. Uh, this way I don't have to actually do anything with the actual washer, I just plug it in. Hook up the water, hook up the drain, push it back in there, screw it into the cabinet, and done. All right, let's get this crap out of the house. I bought what's known as an old box, so I don't want it to be near an actual stud, so I found the stud and I moved it off to the side. Using an old box allows you to retrofit an outlet without needing to actually find a stud. And also when you're cutting through the drywall, make sure you're not pushing all the way through because you don't know what's behind that and you could be cutting something that you don't want to cut. And as you'll see here when I remove this, there's actually electrical there. So if I would have gone too deep, I would have cut through that. So on the old box, you'll see that it has wings off to the side, and that's what's gonna allow it to hold onto the drywall on the back. It's kinda like using a, a butterfly clip to hang a picture or something like that. Similar principle. Since the dishwasher is on a 20 amp breaker, we'll go ahead and install a 20 amp plug. When we're done installing the plug, we'll turn the breaker back on and we'll give it a test. And here you can see there's 122 volts in the plug, so the plug's good. Don't forget to pick up a universal water connection kit because that usually doesn't come with a dishwasher. And I like to get the ones that have the rubber gasket built in because then it'll have a watertight seal without having to use any plumber's putty or anything like that. And I like to work with the flexible hoses because they're much easier to manipulate and get into the right positions. Make sure whenever you're attaching things onto the actual dishwasher unit that you're actually stabilizing it with your hand so this way you don't break off any of the components inside the dishwasher because it's a lot of plastic and thin steel. This dishwasher has an adjustment in the front to raise the back end. Uh, I didn't realize that at first and I ended up having to pull it back out because I thought it had back legs. So don't make that same mistake that I did. And one other thing, when you're adjusting the front legs, make sure you lift up the dishwasher and spin the legs because the weight of the dishwasher makes it hard to spin otherwise.
that it's in place, we'll go ahead and measure it and see what kind of adjustments we need to make on the legs down below in order to get it in the proper position. We'll remeasure, and then once we're happy with where it's at, then we'll just go ahead and take a level, make sure it's nice and level. And then we can go ahead and add the kick plates and screw it into the cabinet. Make sure to drill a pilot hole because most cabinets are made out of oak and oak is very dense so it's hard to get the screw in otherwise. Also just note that when you're installing the drain there's a couple different ways to do it. Mine is with a garbage disposal so my garbage disposal has a dishwasher inlet so I'm going to attach it there but otherwise there's usually a drain on the back end behind the sink that you can add the dishwasher drain into that drops into it. And also to attach the hoses on this little plastic piece I found those little screw cutouts to be absolute trash so I went ahead and just drilled through the plastic. Our old dishwasher was plastic on the inside and after a while that gets yucky and stained but the new dishwasher, the Bosch, is all stainless steel on the inside and super sexy. One of the reasons we chose the Bosch was because of the positioning of the detergent holder. On our old dishwasher if you had large plates on the bottom it would interfere with the opening of that and the soap would not be used. Another cool thing is that the rack is adjustable so if you have taller cups or anything you can go ahead and drop it down and the way it closes. <laughs> 